Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a major announcement out from Unity in regards to their whole cloud servicing, and cloud is getting more and more important to the world of game development, and what we have here is a strategic partnership with Google Cloud being announced with Unity Technology. All of their cloud hosting services are going to be hosted on Google Cloud. Oh, wait a minute. No, this was San Francisco announcement at GDC in June of 2018. No, that's not what I want. What do I want? Oh, I want this one. No, today, August the 8th, Unity has announced a partnership with Microsoft for all of their cloud stuff for game developers and beyond. And actually, since 2018, Unity has moved even more into cloud world. A lot of their acquisitions were all around cloud technologies. We'll do a quick, brief look at what we can expect from there. But basically, this is a partnership between Microsoft, specifically Microsoft Azure. If you don't know what Azure is, it's their equivalent of like Amazon Web Services or AWS or Google Cloud. So, all three of these companies have huge online infrastructures where you could run virtual computers, massive storage, um, remote computing, that kind of stuff. So they're going to be partnering uh, with Azure going forward. So bye bye Google, you are no longer our favorite. We are now here with Microsoft. Uh, so what do we expect from this? Well, it's kind of they're going to be using Microsoft Azure to bring their create solutions to the cloud. You as an end user, if you're using create services, probably won't notice much of a difference to be honest, because it means that just instead of using one technology on the back end, they're going to be using a different technology. So Google Cloud out, Microsoft Azure in. Now I've worked with Microsoft Azure in the past. I actually, I find it pretty reliable and quite enjoyable. Uh, so well, as far as enjoyable as web hosting goes. Uh, so their create service is going to move over there. We've also got some a little bit of ambiguity here, uh, such as Microsoft and Unity will also work together to make it easier to build and distribute your games on the uh, Windows and Xbox platforms. I don't imagine that they're not already doing this, so I don't know what this further partnership is going to mean, but perhaps we're going to get better Windows and Xbox integration as a result of this, or perhaps that's just fluff. Uh, don't know which one. Uh, Azure is going to build more cloud capabilities for you across your ecosystem of tools and services. We will use these capabilities to improve workflows, deliver new functionality, provide additional reliability, and more global access um, options and more. Uh, so we've got going on, what kind of stuff are we talking about here? Well, they're, uh, they're create solutions we all talked about earlier on. We'll go look at what some of those mean in just a second. On top of that, they've bought a number of different technologies such as Parsec, which is high-speed remote computing. So basically, if you want to do gaming on a remote machine or uh, high-end media development, but your local machine is kind of crap, uh, you can remote into a Parsec machine. Um, they've also got, again, Uni Game Services. We'll look at that in a minute. DevOps, Weta Digital, which they purchased, Digital Twins, and more. Um, uh, they've also got their other tools out there. We've got a couple of announcements here with this in their DevOps division because of this change. Uh, the Plastic SCM or their source code management and their cloud build solutions. Well, the build solutions uh, repository limit was increased from 25 to 40 gigabytes and the concurrency limit was raised from six to eight. Uh, Plastic SCM also has uh, continued to improve the in-editor plugin. Uh, Plastic SCM is a source code management system. So basically for your game uh, source code and the assets and the art and all that stuff, you want to store it and, you know, make revision control and all that kind of stuff. That is what Plastic SCM is all about. Through this partnership with Microsoft Azure, we will continue to scale these uh, services to create an even more integrated creator ecosystem that can support larger and more complex projects. Again, Parsec was already available on Azure VM, and I imagine Parsec VMs are also already available on AWS and other cloud platforms there, uh, but they're going to, I don't know, make it work better somehow. Uh, we'd like to see you can access your project files quickly, regardless of the PC where you are editing. Uh, improvements to Digital Twins, we'll get back to that in a second. Improvements to Weta Digital and Ziva, we will get back to both those in a second. And again, back to a little bit of the, huh? Um, uh, as for maximum reach and to enable greater success of your game, we will also be further supporting differentiating features across the Microsoft gaming ecosystems, including Xbox console, PC, as well as Microsoft Store. They've They've supported that all along, so I don't know what that tighter uh, support will be like from them. Again, it might just be marketing speak. Uh, there's also a Microsoft version of this. It, it has even less to say in all honesty, but I will have both linked in the linked article down below if you wish to learn more. Now, a couple of the technologies that are running in the cloud. The first one that you're probably going to interact with uh, if you provide online for your game and your game is developed using Unity is Unity Gaming Services. Now, there is a lot of competition in this space. Epic Games actually has a free set of gaming services that almost do one-to-one one functionality. So in order to win in this space, you got to be good. So we've got things like uh, multiplayer support, uh, VVox, which is voice um, 
voice communications. Uh, Relay, I think, was peer-to-peer -peer networking, cloud save for obviously making your save save in the cloud. Cloud code, which is a way of basically not requiring servers. It allows you to remotely execute code uh, kind of transparently so you can have your back end, but it doesn't feel like it to your developers. Uh, lobbying, content delivery, analytics, ads, monetization tools, cloud diagnostics, uh, and so on and so forth. So they got a ton of things under the Unity Gaming Services category. These can all now be hosted or now will by default be hosted using Microsoft Azure. For a lot of cases, you, since you're dealing with uh, Unity directly and being built by Unity directly and so on, it shouldn't make a difference. It's basically a back-end change, doesn't, doesn't make a difference to you, uh, shouldn't really impact you, and it's, in some ways, these back-ends are ubiquitous. Like, you know, these guys all have five A's of uptime support, really high-end data centers and all that stuff. So hopefully you as an end user don't notice any degradation or problems there. Um, so that is the area that is going to be running from it from, in terms of the Unity gaming services. We've got a couple of other technologies as well. Uh, while back Unity bought Weta Digital for like a couple of billion dollars. Uh, all of their engineers now work at um, Unity and on top of that their tools are all being provided in the cloud. So if you want all these various different special tools, so face tools, hair creation tools, um, and so on, basically that are used. So the Koru, Lumberjack, City Builder, so things like for building procedural cities and trees and so on, uh, rigging systems, etc. All of this stuff actually runs in the cloud. So the cloud that it's going to run on is now going to be Microsoft Azure. On top of that, we've also got Ziva. This is a group of technologies and tools. I never actually got hands on with any of the Ziva stuff, uh, but it is for creating uh, motion picture quality uh, characters. Um, so you've got a number of different tools in that set. They all run in the cloud as well. So Ziva's technology are now going to be hosted on uh, the Azure cloud. And then we've got Digital Twin. Now, Digital Twin is probably a little bit less in the world of game development. Basically, they're digital copies of real-world assets. So if you need to have a simulated one-to-one uh, -one digital representation of something that exists in the real world, uh, Digital Twin basically is that or the tools to create that. So if you want um, Digital Twin, it is all going to be running in the Azure cloud as well. Again, this is more for CAD and engineering side of things than it is uh, in the world of game development because a lot of the times are super, 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 super uh, high resolution kind of point cloud scans or real world physical recreations of actual environments, but the polygon counts are going to be obscene. Uh, but you can obviously use this with gaming as well. And all of that technology, the digital twin stuff is going to be hosted in the Microsoft cloud as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Outward the old. So Google cloud, uh, your reign lasted from 2018 to 2022, hey, four years. That's a reasonable partnership, I guess. But from now on, uh, their, their new BFF is Microsoft. Now you again, as an edge user, shouldn't notice much of a difference. Um, in, in most cases, if you are already using Azure Stack, you're going to find, you know, some more VMs that are out there for you. Uh, but for the most part, I think this is going to just mean that the back ends at, um, at Unity, they're now using Microsoft instead of Google, instead of hosting their own stuff. Um, and you're going to see tighter integration between Microsoft and Unity going forward. But again, I don't know if that's something or that's just marketing speak. But let me know what you think of this announcement of Unity's online solutions in general, of Unity's gaming services. What do you like? Do you consider using them? Are you using Epic Game Services? Or are you using someone else? Let me know all of these things. Comments down below. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.